Solving quadratic equations. Factored form is fantastic. First of all, hey, do you remember ZPP? You know me. Yeah, zero product property. So remember, zero product property says that if you're multiplying two things together, so say A times B equals zero, then we know A equals zero or B equals zero. So as I look at A, I have x plus three times x minus four equals zero. A is in factored form, and all I need to do is use zero product property to solve. I know that we've already learned that inside opposite, but I wanted to really emphasize that we use zero product property and we solve each factor. For B, we have our factored form. Now, it would be so great if I could do inside opposite, right? And just quickly get my solutions. But look, I have coefficients in front of both of my x's, so I can't just quickly do inside opposite. I need to go ahead and use CPP. Yeah, you know me. Yes, so I'm gonna set 2x minus seven equal to zero. 3x plus 2 equals a 0. Zero product property. And now I can solve each of those. So it looks like my two solutions here are x equals 7 halves and x equals negative 2 thirds. Let's look at this next one. This one definitely looks different than the other two. Why? Because I have that GCF out in front, that 2x. So that's still a factor, so I can still set that equal to zero, two x equals zero, zero product property. Set up my other factor, x plus five equals to zero, zero product property, take a minute, solve. Look at that, we've got x equals zero and x equals negative five. Don't let that two x equals zero throw you off. It's okay, two x equals zero, I can divide by two. Zero divided by two is just zero. Well, wait, did this already occur to you that graphically these would be the x-intercepts? And why is that? Think about it. What has changed in the equation? Where's y? Well, y has been replaced with zero. So I highlighted that in yellow to just emphasize, right? If we were graphing this, it would say x plus three times x minus four equals y, but we're just solving it. So now we have x-intercepts are solutions to our equation. Key concept here when solving by factoring, we need the equation to be set equal to zero and then we use our crisscross method to factor. As I look at number one, it's already set equal to zero, so we're set to go. Let's go ahead and crisscross. Now the C value is positive, the B value is negative, so that means that both signs have to match and because B is negative, they're both negative. And there we have it, the two solutions, x equals two, x equals three. As you look at problem two, be careful. Is it set equal to zero? No. Also, keep x squared positive when possible. So I'm first going to go ahead and just add that 12 over so that it's set equal to zero. After it's set equal to zero, go ahead, crisscross, solve it. I hope you're keeping in mind that when we do crisscross, that's how we check that B coefficient, but we always write it straight across in our parentheses for our factors. So X minus three, X minus four, zero product property, and we have our answers. Take a look at three. Once again, what do we need to do first and foremost? You're right, make sure it's set equal to zero. So we're going to subtract the six, move it over to the minus 12, and then I can go ahead and crisscross factor. However, I could make this a lot easier. Did you remember to start strong? So when I factor the nine out, look how much easier it is going to be for me to factor the trinomial. Now let's talk about that nine. Does the nine give us a solution? Is there an X attached with the nine? No, there's not. So we only get solutions when there's an X value. Am I allowed to go ahead and divide the nine out from both sides? I am because zero divided by nine is zero. Nine divided by nine is one. Just remember, we never divide out an X term and have it disappear. That's not okay. Do you remember how to choose which one is the negative factor? Well, B is positive, so that means I want the bigger factor to be positive. So I need the two to be plus and the one to be minus.
Okay, remember and be careful. Our goal in this class is to communicate mathematically. Anyone should be able to look at your work and follow one step to the next and understand what your goal was and what happened from one step to the next. If you drop something or don't show clearly why it's gone, you're not communicating mathematically. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, you have to have it set equal to zero. Give it a try. Miss Ryan's gonna come back in and check in with you. Did you set it equal to zero? Great, go ahead and factor, then solve. All right, let's check it out. I got x equals negative two fifths and x equals negative six. X equals negative two fifths. Let's think about this graphically. That would have been an x-intercept that's not an integer. Hmm, interesting. Go ahead and try the next one. Remember, sometimes it helps to put that little zero X in the middle before you start using crisscross method. But eventually, we want you to recognize this is a difference of squares, right? 121, that's a perfect square. Factor, then solve. x equals 11 and x equals negative 11 because negative 11 times 11 is negative 121. Ooh, look at this last one, 2x squared minus 7x. Remember what Mrs. Peart says, start strong. What do they both have in common? An x, factor out an x. All right, did you get x equals seven halves? Awesome, but did you get caught Make sure you also said x equals zero, right? X was a factor, x equals zero, didn't even have to solve. Well, look at that, solving quadratics isn't so bad. We set them equal to zero, we factor them, and then we use zero product property. Wonder if that always works. 